And I wanted to do ophthalmology since 1997, my first year medical school. It just seemed like a great job. Uh, nothing disgusting, uh, pretty reasonable hours, very few emergencies, you get to sit down while you operate, and uh, a comfortable lifestyle. But it was, of course, seemed impossible, uh, not only because it was highly competitive, but because it had never been done by an Indigenous person before in Australia. Hi everybody, my name is Dr Chris Rallamaker and I'm an alumnus of the University of Newcastle. I began my long association with the university back in 1997 when I moved from Brisbane as a school leaver down to Newcastle to begin the Bachelor of Medicine degree. At the time, I was one of very, very few Indigenous medical students in the country and uh, would soon be one of very few Indigenous doctors in the now quite early days uh, when the universities and medical schools uh, began graduating medical students of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander heritage uh, from their courses. I eventually graduated in ophthalmology and I became the country's first Indigenous ophthalmologist, which in many respects was always seemed like the impossible dream. I always wanted to be an ophthalmologist, as I said, since first year of medicine, but it was such a competitive field in medicine and I had no relatives and I didn't know anybody. And, and as an Indigenous doctor, we, for most of my medical life, you know, we were viewed either with suspicion or, or with the degree of disbelief that our oh, Indigenous person couldn't possibly do medicine. I'm often asked about the state of Indigenous health in Australia and the first part of, part of my answer is that rather than go from a deficit base, I like to go from a strength base and in telling my story, I like to tell a story of achievement and success. I think we're all aware of the health disparities between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australia. They're undeniable in their long term and they're tragic and, and not to be forgotten or overshadowed or discounted. But I, I think uh, what's often overlooked are the good news stories and how far we've come in such a short period of time, particularly since the 67 referendum, which was a critical moment in Australia's history. It's just over 50 years ago when Indigenous Australians achieved citizenship. And in many, many fields, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples in the country have achieved like very other, very few other groups in such a short period of time. We now have Indigenous QCs, uh, barristers, we have Indigenous leaders in business uh, across almost all university degrees. We have, in, you know, we've had our first Indigenous Rhodes Scholar recently accepted into Oxford. Uh, we have Indigenous individuals playing at the, the highest levels in sports and an increasing number of politicians. And of course, I've mentioned our success in medicine and me being the first Indigenous ophthalmologist, but we've also recently graduated our first dermatologist. We now have a group of Indigenous surgeons and almost all of the non-GP colleges, medical colleges in Australia, now either have their first fellow or have uh, registrars within the system who will be fellows in the coming years. We have over four, uh, I think 350, 400 medical students coming through the system now as well. I mean, these are phenomenal numbers considering that it's just over 50 years ago that the, the referendum was passed to give us citizenship. And that's the strength base of the Indigenous story. In the context of Indigenous health in Australia, uh, and specifically in the context of AIDA and my role as president of AIDA, we have continued to work very, very hard, uh, both within and without the system, uh, to achieve improvements and change in the systems. Our very recent and long-term project that uh, is ongoing is the establishment of a set of parameters that not only define cultural safety, but guarantee cultural safety. And that includes training in cultural safety with the Australian Indigenous Doctors Association and embedding it in the standards within APRA that regulates uh, the, the Doctors of Australia and across the other 
um, professions within ARPA as well, but specifically in the context of ADA within medicine. We have had success during the COVID crisis of calling out instances of interpersonal as well as institutionalised racism and bringing that to the attention of APRA, the medical colleges and relevant state jurisdictions. And appropriate responses have been made to that by those organisations and departments to ensure the safety of not only Indigenous doctors but Indigenous patients as well. What we said for a very, very long time in Indigenous health is if you can do it right for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, then you in fact do it right for everybody. Because the principles involved in delivering quality and safe healthcare for Indigenous peoples are the same for all peoples. But because of the historical changes in many respects are more difficult to deliver for Indigenous peoples. In terms of the COVID-19 response, uh, that's something also that Aboriginal Australia can be very, very proud of. We've been ahead of the game for uh, almost the whole crisis. Mainstream Australia has trailed Indigenous Australia's response. Uh, we had lockdowns before Mainstream Australia had lockdowns. We were talking about the risks to our people and uh, ensuring that we had the resources to get through the crisis long before Mainstream Australia and the Australian government was was doing that and I suspect um, perhaps even before they were thinking about it as being a potential crisis. I wrote recently uh, in a mainstream newspaper about Indigenous Australia's long history with pandemics beginning with the pox virus soon after the arrival of the first fleet and the origins of where the pox virus came from have been debated for a long time and they're very serious but the, there's no doubt that there was an epidemic there, which didn't just occur in the Sydney Basin. It spread across the entire continent from Indigenous nation to Indigenous nation along our highways and trade routes and impacted probably all Indigenous nations and severely and led to catastrophic social and economic collapse for those peoples. Later on, of course, we had the Spanish flu and then more recently uh, there was the, the swine flu that also went through Indigenous communities and affected, in some areas, up to 10% of those communities. So we have a long history of dealing with these pandemics and a long memory of those pandemics, as well as an awareness that because of our greater burden of illness, including chronic diseases and issues of overcrowding and social disadvantage, that we are at higher risk of, of poor outcomes general outcomes, so uh, issues around morbidity, but also issues around mortality, so higher death rates. And the COVID virus was treated very, very seriously when it was identified. So it's the social determinants of health that increase the risk of COVID-19 uh, for Indigenous peoples, as well as the higher general burden of illness, and particularly chronic diseases, blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes being the big three. We've responded uh, very well and are very, very proud of the response within Indigenous Australia. The peak bodies have worked closely together and AIDA has been uh, a major part of the task force made up of peak bodies in that response. We've been very successful in achieving uh, no infections to date in rural or remote communities. And it's around 56 at the last count Indigenous Australians having COVID-19. Uh, in terms of mitigating risk for COVID-19, as I've said, the peak bodies have been working very closely together for a long time. Uh, we've proud, uh, built very strong uh, connections and connections we can be very proud of with uh, state and federal governments, as well as our colleagues in the medical colleges, uh, in the allied health space and the nursing space and, uh, and government task forces. Uh, we have very strong connections with the Australian Medical Association and their state affiliates. These strategies will not only ensure the improvement of the state of Indigenous health through internal advocacy, it will also ensure the continued growth of the numbers of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander doctors until we at least reach parity of 3,000 doctors in the country. That's a population parity of medical doctors. 
but also it, uh, our strategies will help us embed an understanding of why Indigenous health is important and embed a more culturally safe system for all Australians by ensuring it's culturally safe for Indigenous Australians. As I said earlier, if you do it right for Indigenous people in this country, you do it right for everybody because getting it right for Indigenous people is uh, is probably the hardest of, of, of major population groups in Australia. They're my thoughts and uh, my musings around my own journey, not only through medicine, but my long association with the University of Newcastle. I was very proud to receive the Alumni Excellence Award uh, last year. And in fact, as I was uh, at the award ceremony, it was a breakfast ceremony, I was looking through uh, previous recipients and I noted that uh, my cousin uh, was, was a recipient uh, a number of years before for the uh, International Alumni Award. He's now the chairman of Peabody Coal, uh, chairman and CEO of Peabody Coal. And so I saw that in there, and then uh, the next thing I knew, my name was announced as the as the winner. So I'm very, very proud of that, and very, very proud, as I said, of my association with Newcastle and what Newcastle achieves. So thank you, uh, Newcastle, again, for uh, the opportunity to be involved in the life uh, of, of the university and campus life. For the, uh, thank you for the opportunity of being, uh, to be involved with the alumni. Uh, and although I live a long way away on the Sunshine Coast, just north of Brisbane, uh, my alma mater is never far from my thoughts. So I wish everybody well. Uh, thank you again. Thank you for listening. I, I hope uh, there's been something in what I've said uh, that is of, of use and uh, my kindest regards to all. Thank you very much.